Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over components versus coaxial speakers. Today we're going to be showing you the JLC2s. Got the components on, the, on your left here, coaxes on your right. Okay, so when you're deciding between the two types of speakers, there's several things you want to keep in mind. One, budget, because component speakers are more expensive than coaxial speakers. Two, the application, do you have enough room to put everything, or how, how do the speakers lay out? And three, your install skill level, because components are a little bit more work compared to a coaxial. Now, looking at the coaxial or full range speaker, if you want to call it, the way it's designed is you have your two-year in the middle, this takes care of all your high frequencies, and then you have your mid-range woofer over here. This, will play mid this is only supposed to play mid-range bass, so when you're, after installing this, if you have a deck or an aftermarket amplifier, you want to tune this to the appropriate frequency. Now, inside of here, there's going to be a crossover, or basically it's just a cap, and it blocks out all the low frequencies from playing out of here. Now going on to components. The biggest thing you'll notice is it comes with this. Now this is a crossover. It has inputs and outputs for the woofer and for the tweeter. Now the main advantage with a component is you can see that it's got a lot more going on compared to your coaxial design. So basically what it does is it allows you to reproduce music more accurately compared to this. The other difference is, is the tweeter location. Now you see on this right now, it's got the flush mount, so you just have to make a hole and it'll mount it nice and flush. The advantage with having a component setup is you can place the tweeter for better imaging. Now, it really depends on the vehicle because on some vehicles, if you do kick pods, you would put it close to the woofer. Other vehicles, I've seen people put in the A pillars or in the doors. The only downside to this is if you put the tweeter too far away from the woofer, at a certain point, your ears will actually start to detect there's an actual length difference between it, so it's not going to image properly. So what you're actually supposed to do is get this as close to the woofer as possible. Now the problem is when you're dealing with car audio, you have to make compromises. You can't always have this in the preferred spot depending on the vehicle. Sometimes in some vehicles, this sounds good in the door, and then this sounds really good on the A-pillar bouncing off the windshield. It really depends on the application and the listener as well. Not everyone's going to like every single setup. So the best thing you do is put in the proper product and do as best of an install as you can. Another thing to consider when you're buying speakers is whether you're going to be amplifying them or not. If you're running components, I highly recommend that you run them with an amplifier. Because of the crossover, they require a little more power to run. So if you're doing a non-amplified applica application, these might actually sound better than these because they require less power to run. These are all things you have to consider. In a perfect world, you guys are going to have a four channel, and then a mono block with a sub, and an aftermarket deck. Now, when you're installing these types of speakers, there's a couple things that you have to consider. With the coaxial speaker, it's the simplest way. It's technically just a drop in. You have to just change your connector, so then you go into the positive and negative terminals, and then it should just drop in. Now the C2 is quite large compared to a lot of stock speakers, so what you might have to do is put on an aftermarket ring, they come out made out of ABS plastic, or make your own. For some vehicles, let's say like in the newer Chevys, Chevy trucks, you have an oddball shape. So you want, I really suggest that you build one of these because you're gonna get a good, a good seal and nice foundation for the speakers. So you have your old shape, and then you can drop in your new speaker into that. Now for you Volkswagen guys, when you're dealing with the late 90s or mid 90s Volkswagens, like the Jettas and the Golfs, you have that big grill. This actually fits nicely on there. So when you're doing an install where the speaker's exposed, when you're installing a speaker that comes with the grill, just install that on top to give you a nice finished look. And it also protects the woofer as well and the tweeter. Now when it comes to installing the components, you'll want to watch my video on how to install component speakers because it's a lot more involved. Now the mid-range woofer will install just like the coaxial, it'll go in the factory location and everything. But when you have to install the crossover first. Now there is an input, you have to put a full range signal to this. If you're dealing with a vehicle that already has an amplified system, you're going to have to rewire it a bit because if you only send low frequencies through, it's only going to put out low frequencies, so this isn't going to work properly. So vehicles that aren't amplified or you're running an aftermarket amplifier, this goes in a lot easier. So these are all things you have to consider. And you have to find a place for this. Either put it in the door, if you're going to put it in the door, put it on the outside of the vapor barrier so it doesn't get wet. Preferably you want to put this in the vehicle. 
tweeter, another thing. If you have a vehicle with stock tweeter locations, perfect. You can put this in right there. Other times you have to make a hole, make a kick pod. There's a lot, really you can do whatever you want, but there's a lot of things you have to consider when you're installing this. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the difference between coaxial and component speakers. Mm -hmm.